Writing the Family History, Chapter 2. In the family, the females abound, who do not wed and do not birth. They are strong and become both mothers and fathers to the children that may await them. The men do not fare as well. In the same village, cousin marries cousin. He is tall, all angle-formed, from jaw to ankles. She is round like goose-down pillows. This village has been raped. Russians, Germans, it's always one or both. Massacres, massacres, and more massacres. Every other decade, it seems. There were also these Poles there in those camps. Half of his family vanished and despised gypsies and after a certain point, really anyone who looked at you crooked. Causing such deeply embedded grief, brutality becomes the learned weapon Paranoia, the chivalrous shield, and flowers everywhere, wrapped around maples, outdoor altars in the hayfields. This is where one cousin boy died, my age, fierce red hair, his motorbike the only joy of being fast in the Cowstown family village. It would have been from alcohol otherwise. The silent dreams that wake in me, worse than gunshots I heard in that old house on Beach Street. Red and white eagle, Polish flags flying in the middle of little Puerto Rico. Nationalism at its best. Fierce, defiant, and ignoring the obvious. And always flowers everywhere. Red poppies this time tucked into 1950s baggy men's jackets with war medals, veterans with ulcers and canes. This is what remains of the old land here. <laughs>